In just one year, the tiny lesbian gecko army has fully spiraled out of my control. And the worst part about these innocent looking little creatures is that you could keep them too. But be warned, the chaos, breakthroughs, and unbelievable heartbreak was beyond what I could have ever predicted. How many geckos could we possibly make in one year? Well, it all started so simple on day one. I wanted something pretty to look at at the corner of my desk while I did my very important big boy job. And to be honest with you, I loved this project, but it actually got me in trouble. The outrage in the comments was something I have never seen before. That video is now unlisted from YouTube, only on Patreon, because bullying sometimes works. And just like that, the army marched on with our first two very adorable little morning geckos. It's now day 24. The first two ladies got their first enclosure upgrade, and I added a third gecko to the group, bringing the total to three. This enclosure is fugly, but that doesn't matter because they can't see the outside. And lucky for them, we have a beautiful jungle upgrade coming up later in the video. But please don't tell them, it's a surprise. Before I knew it, six months had gone by and our ladies were nearly fully grown. And they had a big surprise for me. One that almost ended in total catastrophe. I had one of them out, I was taking photos of her, and she escaped into my closet. You gotta be kidding, man. I got you. This is an animal that you do not want escaping in your house. Of course, I'm not scared of her, but I am scared of what she could do. You see, these geckos are different. Males are rare and usually infertile, so they are useless to us. These ladies reproduce through a process called parthenogenesis. They pseudocopulate, which is essentially lots of rubbing in theatrics. It's an asexual method of reproduction where they stimulate ovulation and then self-fertilize through a kind of cloning, all done without the help of a male. 100% of the mother's own DNA is recombined to make her hatchling. That is wild. Nature is so f cool. That means a single female morning gecko could hypothetically repopulate an island all by herself. But being in good company helps jumpstart the process. Yes. Yeah. And little did I know she had a big surprise for us. I'm going to use some artificial intelligence here to enhance the image. Ah, sorry. All right, there we go. That's right, she is filled with eggs, two to be exact, which means for the first time we are on our way to truly creating an army. It's day 243, and while she was busy marinating her little masterpieces, I hatched a little idea of my own. I needed a way to take the eggs away from the mother before they hatch because this species will sometimes eat their own young. But there's just one issue. The eggs are sticky, so I need to get the mothers to lay the eggs on something I can take out of the enclosure. How about a travel toothbrush tube? Actually, hmm, make it six. They're small, dark, and secure, which is exactly what they look for when laying. And to my surprise, it worked. Within a week, the tube was filled with four perfect little eggs, but they didn't stop there. Four turned into six, which quickly turned into eight just two months later. The embryos developed, revealing the tiny life inside. And before I knew it, the ladies had fully switched on the ovarian printing press and were laying eggs quicker than I could keep up with, both inside and outside the tubes, wherever they felt like it. Look at how many eggs there are. Dude, they're dead. Look, and they no way. Why are they doing? I just pulled eggs. Oh, you're kidding me. Look at this. Man, this one is so fat. Or, sorry, big boned. And this wasn't a problem, at least not at first. I made the eggs a little nursery so they could hatch in peace away from their mother's hungry mouths. And now the only thing to do was wait and check back soon. It's day 255. The armor was expanding fast and now it's more important than ever that we get them a proper upgrade. For the enclosure, I'm using 100% silicone to adhere speaker foam mesh to the background. I'm then cutting in some slits to slide in some wood. A little more silicone to hold it together, followed by some expanding foam. This stuff stinks. We need to let this cure for two weeks to air out any toxins before we bring this thing to life. It's day 281 and I checked on our eggs and noticed that one was clearly different. Different. And then it clicked. Holy crap. We have a hatch. We have to. But where is she? It took a bit of searching, but there she was. Oh my God. I could eat you so easily. Oh my God. Life is terrifying when you're this small, so I gave her some alone time and jumped back into making the upgraded enclosure. We will not be planting the plants in soil like you'd expect. Instead, we're using pond filter foam. On top of that, we've got a layer of lava rock and then sphagnum moss and some leaf litter for some creatures that'll come later on. A wide variety of philodendrons, selenum, mosses, and so much more are gonna transform this humble plastic cube into a fully functioning ecosystem. It's day 299, and finally, our first hatchling has some company. In one night, we went from one to three hatchlings, bringing the total army count to six. Right away, the youngsters began trying to establish dominance within their nursery. They make these little clicking sounds to try to sort out the social hierarchy. Within the coming weeks, we added another four eggs to the nursery, bringing the total unhatched 10. Back with the enclosure upgrade, we have a very special creature we're gonna introduce. This took me months to find. And the best part is they're gonna do a job for us. Thank God. Dope. 
Pick something up. Do something with your life. Good, 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 good. We got the ice pack. That's great news because it's 90 degrees out. They're alive! Yes! Wow, they're so cool. These are Thai red springtails, and they're not alone. We've also got two species of isopods. They'll live amongst the leaf litter, nibbling at decomposing organic matter. As a treat, they're getting a freeze-dried fish and a piece of jawbone I found handy. This will help supplement their calcium intake. By day 320, the plants are really starting to grow, but overall, the setup is lacking that nice full look I like to go for. Package of plants from Christian should do the trick. Thank you, Christian. We're also gonna paint this entire enclosure with moss paste. This stuff also stinks, but more of a natural stink and less of an entitled for financial compensation stink. You know what I mean? This will grow in over the course of months. So again, we're just gonna have to trust the process. Back with the hatchlings, the number of babies is beginning to get too high to keep track of and we have a huge problem. These girls are messy and they seem to poop with the same discretion and accuracy that people take at gas station bathrooms. Everything is filthy, but cleaning them is incredibly difficult. They're fast, they're tiny, and they're super hard to keep track of. And I have no idea how many are even in here. Rather than deal with that, I've got a much better and prettier idea. I don't think they're big enough to be reunited with their moms. So how about a tiny self-cleaning enclosure in the meantime? It's what they call in the biz, bioactive. This time we've got Begonia soli mutata, we've got Guzmania lingulata, and a nice little Monstera siltepicana. Getting them in here is nerve wracking, but I'm excited because for the first time in months, I'll actually be able to count them. I'm gonna do the transfer over a catch bin to avoid any escapes. Oh, Ooh, that one's really white. Did you see it? And I very quickly realized we have a lot more than I realized. Oh, there's two. Oh, they're all jumping off. Come on this side. Yes. Here we go, dude. Yeah. As of day 3.30, we have three adults and 11 hatchlings, bringing the total to 14. Within a matter of weeks, life exploded within this tiny oasis. Mushrooms appeared, mold came and went, and tiny snails explored the forest floor. And for the first time, our hatchlings had a chance to hunt for food in a natural environment. At first, they seemed nervous of the flies, or perhaps it was the massive ape dropping the flies inside, but very quickly they got the hang of things. This little one is locked onto its prey. This fly is totally still, but his fate is already sealed. The gecko's breathing accelerates and she prepares to make her move, inching closer ever so slowly as to not spook her prey. Then in the blink of an eye, the fly is alive one moment and being swallowed the next. Suddenly that rent payment doesn't seem so important, huh? These flies are really the only annoying aspect of keeping these geckos. They're selectively bred not to fly, which helps, but they always find a way to escape. Luckily, very few ever evade the hands of death. Nice. It's day 341. The hatchlings are growing so fast and almost old enough to finally reunite with their moms. For months, things ran like clockwork. The adults lay their eggs within their tub setup. I transferred the eggs over to the planted nursery to prevent predation. And while all this was happening, the big enclosure upgrade was allowed time to grow in and mature. But one day, everything changed. I glanced over to the tub and something caught my eye. What? 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 How did you get... What are you doing? How did you fuck? Oh, dude. You're so small. No way. Where'd you go? Somehow, a baby hatched with the adults. And this started happening because the ladies decided it was time to lay their eggs in more sneaky places, like in this court, and even on the side of the wall. Their lights turned off for the night, so I promised to remove the baby first thing in the morning to prevent it from being eaten. But apparently, that was too long to wait. I looked everywhere, in the tubes, on the cork, on. and even inside these tempting little crevasses, but nothing. The worst had come true. I think they might have been eaten, man. And I felt like I had failed. But is it really a failure? I mean, if nature is just taking its course. But we aren't in nature, we're in my bedroom. I don't want things to needlessly die. And instead of having a moment of existential self-reflection, I could have spent just 10 seconds to realize that I didn't fail. In fact, I'm just impatient because the baby isn't dead. Oh, oh, oh my God. She's under this oh leaf. God. Hi. Oh my God. <gasps> Don't scare me like that. What? And there's one under here. Yo. There's so many. They're all alive. Holy sh- Look, what are you doing? Where did you come from, dude? Where did you come from? Oh, please don't jump. Yes. Yep, that's right. Two hatched out with their mom. Uh, some are getting out. How'd that even happen? I got my answer. I drilled a you know, pretty crappy hole for a misting system. Look at this. The tape is peeling off, dude. 
Alcatraz, man. And you know, this moment like, really made me realize the moment you have twice the number of geckos you think you have is the moment things have gotten out of control. It's time. It's day 365. Finally, my desk has something beautiful. Over the course of three months, this enclosure has transformed into a flourishing ecosystem. But it's still missing one key component. It's finally time to add the hardworking adult geckos to their new home. At first she was nervous, but three hours later, uh, making her come out with tongs worked just fine. But this would not be complete until we finally reunited them with their firstborn daughter, as she is finally big enough to hold her own. Have fun in your incest orgy thunderdome, little one. But the big question still remains unanswered. How many geckos did we make in one year? Well, there are three adults and 20 hatchlings bringing the total to 23 geckos in one year. Well, and an unknown number that I've escaped in my room. That's <sighs> tomorrow's problem. The Tiny Lesbian Gecko Army is a forever evolving project on this channel, so stick around. Big things are coming for these lovely ladies. And a huge thank you to our supporters on Patreon. We've got some big goals on this channel, and you all put us one step closer. So thanks for being here, and I'll see you soon. Yeah. Peace!